everybody, this is Carolyn from Homesteading Family, and today Brianna is helping me in the kitchen. Thanks, Brianna. Welcome. I was just on a trip down to Southern California to visit some family, and I got to pick lemons from a lemon tree down there. And lemons are in season this time of year if you live in that type of a climate. So I wanna show you how to make a treat that we just love in this house called preserved lemons. And the way that we're preserving them is actually by lacto-fermenting them. But the common term for these are preserved lemons. And you can see these are not very large lemons. They're not too small either. I'm expecting that it will take from about six to 10 of these, depending on the size of your lemons, to fill a quart jar. So here we have these. I've already scrubbed these just in hot water. So no soap or anything like that, but just in hot water to clean them up. And you see these little ends, the leftovers from the stems. We're just gonna pop those guys right on off because you want to be able to, here, can let's see, there's a little bit of stem left on that one, because you want to be able to um, go right ahead and into chopping these when these are done. So you don't want any hard parts like that in there. Now, we often think of lemons as being used as kind of a sweet food, but um, this is gonna make a lemon that is great for your savory dishes, like your roast chicken, or even a salad dressing. These is just gonna be amazing. You're gonna love this. Now you get to go ahead and choose your flavorings. Again, we're fermenting this. And when you're fermenting, you get to have a lot of control over the spices that you put into there. So you can kind of use whatever you want. Um, today we're gonna be using a few peppercorns, some cinnamon sticks, and a couple bay leaves right off my little bay bush that I have. Uh, you could add in some whole cloves. You could add in some chili peppers. That would be spicy. That'd be good. <laughs> a little bit of thyme would be great also. But today we're going to use these guys. So what we're going to do is just take our clean quart jar that we're going to be fermenting in, and we're going to put those uh, peppercorns right in there. That's probably about 10 peppercorns. You don't have to be real exact. And then, Brianna, can you go ahead and put in some of the cinnamon sticks. That's about three cinnamon sticks. And then we're gonna put our bay leaves, and we're gonna put this all in right at the bottom just to make this easy. All right, before we can actually get started with the lemons, we need to measure out the salt that we need. And for preserved lemons, we want to use about five teaspoons of salt per quart jar. So are you counting? You making sure Two, I got it right? Three. Good. She's my four. backup counter. <laughs> Five. There we go. Okay, so now I know how much salt we need. And we're going to take this lemon and we're going to put it stem side down. Now the stem side is the side that's probably flatter and not so pointy as the blossom side. And then we're going to cut this lemon into quarters without cutting all the way through. We want to leave it intact at the bottom. Now that is purely cosmetic and kind of just the old fashioned way of doing this. So if you cut all the way through, it's not gonna ruin your preserved lemons, go for it. In fact, if you wanted to, you could slice these or quarter them and just completely do that, you know, leave them quartered all the way. Okay, now what we're gonna do, Brianna, this is gonna be your job here, is we're gonna take our salt and we're gonna sprinkle that all in there like this. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one to show you, and then you can do the next ones all that right. we're gonna do. All right. And we're just sprinkling that all the way in there. We wanna get about a teaspoon of salt in there. Okay, and then we're gonna put them back together and we're gonna drop them right on in there. We're gonna try and get them so that that intact spot is at the bottom because we're gonna squish as many of these in here, one on top of the other, and it's gonna kind of flatten them out. All right, you got that part? Yep. All right. Now we'll see if I can do my part and not cut right through the bottom. <laughs> All right. If this one has a lot of seeds in it, if you see that, you can just go ahead and pop them off to the side. You don't need to make too big of a fuss about the seeds, but you know, if they're popping out anyways, go ahead and just take them off. There we go. Okay, and sprinkle it all in there and all the different parts that you can get it to, okay? Okay, I think that's good. All right, can you put them back together? And put them right on top. All right, now, what we have to do is we have to start squishing them. There we go. 
Okay. Good job. There we go. Hey, okay, this guy's really pointy. Let's <laughs> push this one in. Takes a lot of squishing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I could get that part if you want. Sure. Okay. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start squishing them. And if you can get them stacked one inside the other, that's going to make it uh, end up kind of a neater final pro product. But, you know, again, that's just for looks. And I got to say, I'm not the greatest at uh, being a stickler for how things look. Okay, and we just really want to stack these guys in there as well as we can. And we're going to take our sauerkraut pounder or our wooden spoon or whatever you have and really start kind of pushing down in there. And the point is to start extracting that juice. The lemon's going to do, or the salt is going to do quite a bit of the work of extracting the juice. But you really want to pack them in there. And we just want that packed in there really well. Pushing down, pushing down. And we, our goal is to really fill this entire jar. All right, got it there? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get this last guy in here. Give it a little extra oh. salt. Okay, and I'm going to just get him in there. You can see, juice you can see that water. juice. Yeah, that juice is filling all the way up. I don't know if you're going to be able to squish with the spoon right off. <laughs> I don't think it's going to. Okay, there we go. Here, let's see if I can help you push down a little. Woo! And you can see that this is filling right up with lemon juice. Thank you, Brianna. That's great. Okay, now I want to make sure that I get the rest of this salt that we didn't use, and I want to get it in there. And you can just put it right on the top. It's going to dissolve right in. And then we have a little bit of salt here that didn't get, uh, that got loose on the cutting board. So I'm going to add just a pinch more just to make up for that. Now we've got all of this juice out and this is really full, which is great. It's exactly what you want. But I also have some backup juice to help top it right on off. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a top just to fill this all the way up. And then we're going to close this down with one of the two part canning lids that has the rubber seal on it. So we're just going to put that right on there and put it on quite tightly there, just like that. Now, this needs to sit out on the counter to start fermenting for about three days. If your kitchen is really cool, you may wanna give it four to five days. And you're gonna start seeing bubbles come up on it, and you're gonna start seeing signs that it's fermenting. Now, in order to make sure that it always stays under the level of the brine that's in there, first of all, we're gonna make sure that's on there nice and tight for this part but every time every day you want to come by and you want to flip it over uh, at least once a day you want to flip it over so i'm going to let it sit like this for about 12 hours and then i'll come back and flip it back like that for about 12 hours and that'll be ensure that there is plenty of brine covering or at least coming into contact with each of the parts of those lemons every day um, so that it can't start to mold after about three days out on the counter, we're gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator or in cool storage. A cellar would be great or anything that stays at about 55 degrees or less. And you're gonna to wanna to let these kind of marinate for about a month before you start eating oh, right. Now these preserved lemons have been sitting for about a month on the shelf. They um, were turned upside down just like that about every day for maybe the first week and then um, they just after that I kind of turned them whenever I thought about it which was probably about every three four or five days and would just set them a different direction that way no mold can organize or form on the top of them at this point they're really well cultured and salted so they're gonna be really good so let's get into them now when you want to use your preserved lemons what you're going to be using actually is the rind and here we have one and you can see the um, the texture has changed a little bit it's gone from kind of that more rigid feeling to a little bit more i don't know i think i'd describe it maybe as a gummy feel in my hands here 
Now, some people actually pull off the fruit, the flesh of the fruit when they go to eat these, but you know, I find that it just adds a really nice flavor, so I don't bother, but you can certainly just peel the actual meat of the lemon right off if you wanted to. Now, all you're gonna do with these guys is just chop them very finely for a recipe, and they, I gotta tell you, they pack a, quite a punch, so you don't need a whole lot, and generally, you want these diced really finely, um, because you, know, you are eating the skins, and while they've certainly toned down a little bit, um, and the, the salt flavor has moderated the uh, zing a little bit, um, they're still lemon rind, so they're still pretty zingy. These add an amazing flavor to pastas, um, to chicken dishes, to fish, uh, salad dressings, all sorts of things. Anything you want to take from kind of just a normal everyday meal to zingy and really good, just toss a few of these in and it's really good. So I'm just dicing these up really small and then they will be ready to go right on into whatever dishes you have. And again, I gotta say, pasta is just amazing. If you're doing like a uh, pasta primavera with the spring vegetables, a little bit of this chopped really finely is just amazing. All right, mmm, that is good. A little salty and definitely lemony zingy. Now, these will last you an entire year, if not longer, when they're kept in cold storage. So you can either put them in your refrigerator or in a cool pantry shelf. And, you know, I've got to say, I've left these out just on my kitchen shelf for a year at a time, and they've always been great. Because they're fermented, you don't really have a problem with them getting bad bacteria. The concern would be that they might mold or that they might just get too mushy and too sour and they just wouldn't have the great flavor and quite the same punch. But, um, you know, being that these are lacto-fermented, you guys have a lot of versatility with them and they're so good. So. Get out there, get those lemons right now while they're still in season and get them preserved for your dishes all year long. Take care, goodbye.